feel like I've been running around trying to hurry up and find a spot where I can be alone in nature with the Lord. <clears throat> I um, I like cemeteries because they're peaceful and usually there's not a lot of people at them. <sighs> but okay, the Lord's been... The Lord's been putting a lot of heavy stuff on me this morning and I'm at work so I only have a little bit of time before I have to be to my next account where I can... um where I can really talk, but um, oh, I wish I could stay here all day with the Lord. Oh, soon, Lord, soon. But the Lord came to me, oh, Holy Spirit be with me, let your words come through and not my own. He came, he came to me telling me, you know, because I was asking him, like, Lord, you know, these certain things that I've been doing, does it bother you? Is it bad? Is it a sin? I don't know, because it's not in your word. And, um, and I feel like certain things are good, but, you know, I don't want to go based off my feelings, and the heart can be deceiving. So I've been praying on it, and f just not feeling like I have, you know, direct confirmations. And the Lord came to me this morning and was like, he was like, now, I know you can do things because I've made you capable. I'm not going to sit here and say, can you go a certain amount of time without doing them? Because you can. Because through me, you can do all things. He's like, but I, I will ask you, will you? Will you go three days? Will you go three days? without doing these things and in that time will you have longing to do those things when your time is up will you jump right back into it because up oh, I've done my three days um and now time to jump back into it he said because if there is longing for it um that you know distracts you and takes you away from me and if you're just waiting to do this thing for me just so you can jump back in after. Then you have a burning for something other than me. You have a burning for these vices. And it really made me think, because I wanted to stop and think, like, am I idolizing these things, you know? And just kind of, I was reflecting on myself and asking the Lord to help reveal things to me about myself. Um... Because we're often the last to see ourselves, you know, sometimes everyone else can see us before we can. And I don't know, it was just so powerful. It just moved through my spirit. I was thinking, wow, Lord, like you'd humble yourself, you know, to ask me to just, you know, walk away from something just for a little bit so kindly so nicely so mercifully you know he could just be like i'll let you sink in it or i'm gonna rip it from you and you know leave you confused and but no just his kindness his kindness like back when i was more into religion when i knew god through religion um i experienced more of his wrath and rules and I didn't experience him as this loving compassionate you know spirit being that came into a human body to um to begin and have a love story with us you know, and, and this was another thing he was saying this morning, too. He was he was like, Stephanie, you know, you ask me a lot to take away your burdens, to heal you because you want to be better for me. You want to be better for everyone else in your life. And he was telling me, you know, I don't ask you to pick up your cross and carry it to be mean. And I understand, you know, your pain, your pain of, of calling out to Abba and asking if he will let this pass over you. 
He's like, I understand that pain, but Abba knows best. And I willingly picked up that cross and carried it for you so that we may have a love story. And now you're living out the other half of this love story. We all are. We all have this unique love story with Jesus. He, he lived, he came and lived and died for us because he loves us and wants us to be with him forever. And now we're just living out our love stories to him. And it's amazing because I was thinking when I pick up my cross and I carry it every day, I get these these feelings deep down of, of emptiness, of, you know, from the pain of it all in my flesh, but then also we do have that physical distance from God. Spiritually, he is with us always, but there is that physical distance. And the more I fall in love with him, the more I have that longing. And he was just telling me, you know, I don't ask you to empty yourself, to look down on you or to be cruel or to, you know, to have you completely become non-existent and not you and have no sense of worthiness. He's like, I ask you to empty yourself because you're in such a fragile human state and I have the power to love you, to, to show you loving and wonderful ways. And I ask you to empty yourself so that I may fill you with that because you're in a fragile condition and it's not bad to need me. And I want you just as much as you want me. And you know, it's amazing because I get so caught in my, I can't speak for anyone else. You know, some people have share in my weaknesses and can relate and some people don't have that struggle. Maybe they have struggles in other areas. Um, and you know, it's beautiful. We all, we all have struggles in different areas. So areas where I'm weak, others are strong and we come together and we help each other and vice versa, you know, but it's just amazing to me because one of my weaknesses is I get so caught up in wanting to do more for the Lord, wanting to give more, feeling like, well, is this a one-way relationship because you are all loving and wonderful and I'm not. And I want to give that back. And I get so hardcore into it. And maybe that's just because I grew up most of my life under religion and the Lord's still trying to get some of those um, mindsets out of me. But I get caught up in that. And the Lord, you know, he comes to me and he reassures me. And, and to be honest with you, I, I often forget and need reassurance constantly. But he reminds me that he's in love with me. He's in love with you. He's in love with us. Oh, look. It's a moss heart. Thank you, Yeshua. <laughs> but, see? he He's in love with us. As crazy as it sounds, because we're so broken and fragile and, you know, can be wicked. But, um, or succumb to wickedness. I, um, it's amazing. It's amazing that he is, he is love in more of a sense than I can understand, than we can understand, you know, in the flesh and with this little bit of consciousness that we use. But wow, the Lord, the Lord is on a journey right now. And I will say, Another thing he brought to me today, for anyone out there who's thinking of wanting to talk to other people about God, but not being sure how to have the conversation, just remember, Jesus came so that we could get rid of the old ways, the Old Testament ways, the religious ways of thinking about God. He came to be the final sacrifice so that there needs not be any 
any more of that. It is finished. He came so that we can move from religion with Abba to relationship. And remember when you're talking to people that no matter how close we're getting to him, no matter how much knowledge and wisdom he's giving us and how much he's pouring out, and he is pouring out a lot right now. I mean, I've been having signs, visions, some dreams. Um, my husband, my friends, my kids, my precious little babies, our precious little babies, Abba. You know, he's pouring everything out right now. But just remember, no matter how close we get to him, no matter how much he gives us, we are a speck in comparison to the big picture. And to humble ourselves is such a beautiful, beautiful love to live in. Remember to share your weaknesses. Remember that, yes, you've come out of wickedness and, you know, you're fighting that battle every day and you believe in the Lord. But also remember to share. Share that you still fall. Share how you fall. Share how the Lord picks you up every time. Share what you know, but what your body, your flesh sometimes combats and may win over in a moment. And then the Lord swoops in and saves us again and again. Don't just speak of him saving you once. Speak of how he saves us every day. Remember that if we were perfect and in perfect righteousness right now, we would not need him. And he told me that. Why do you want to put down your cross? Do you not want me anymore? Do you not need me? Do you have love and life all figured out? Are you so full that you have no room for me? When we talk to other people, you know, the Lord is, he's not playing games right now. He is coming back soon. And he's confirmed this to many all over the world of all ages, of all ethnicities, even of different beliefs. He's turning people. And now is not the time to be thoughtless with our words when we speak of God. Now is not the time to jump into, you know, the religious ways of thinking. People need to be saved right now. And although it's, that's through God's will, we need to be vessels open for him to work through. We need to be conscientious of the words, the blessings and curses that we're speaking out into the world. We have to remember that that the Lord is coming very soon and this is our time. We have but little time left to get the news out, to share the gospel, to share our gospels, to share how we walk with the Lord every day. People are so far into wickedness right now. The world is so difficult to, to survive. It's so cold and disconnected and people don't know what to do, so they're turning to vices. They're turning to labels and crutches. They're turning to doctors telling them there's things wrong with them. But we do not fight battles of the flesh. We fight battles of the spirit. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you for clarity. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And it's so devastating. It's so devastating because we weren't meant to live like this. You know, this isn't what God wanted for us. But wow, when, when we play God in our lives, look at all the things we choose. Look at what we've chosen for centuries. And yet we put so much trust into ourselves. <sighs> How heartbreaking for Yeshua. How heartbreaking for Abba. 
And all I have to say is the Lord is trying to, he wants to use you. He wants to use us to bring more people home. Share yourself. Share yourself. Share God through you. Connect. Lower yourself. Humble yourself. Empty yourself. And remember to be merciful as he is merciful to us. He meets us where we're at. We don't often meet other people where they're at. Think of when we're talking to kids, how much we like to take the stand, put ourselves on a pedestal and start teaching, teaching of our experience, our wisdom, our knowledge. But what is God's wisdom? God is so big and we're so small and he comes and he meets us where we're at. And who are we to not go to children, his children, and go down to when we were that age, whether physically in the flesh, whether we're talking to an eight year old, a 12 year old, a 15 year old, or mentally, when we were much younger, even in our early 20s. And just remember to be merciful and meet people where they're at. Remember not only where you were when you had that way of thinking, but what you struggled with, and not just what you uniquely struggled with to make yourself stand out. What do we all struggle with? Have we all not looked in the mirror and felt things, felt horrible things about ourselves? Have we all not cried into our pillows at night when we were little kids? Have we all not felt this disconnection in this systematic world and suffered over it? Remember to connect. Remember to connect. This is what the Antichrist has been doing for years and years. These school systems taking God out. They teach, they teach scientific based things. And it's not like there's anything wrong with science. Science is beautiful. God made it. It's interesting. It's fun. But where's the spirit? Children don't know what their spirits are. How can they connect to the great spirit, to the Holy Spirit? There's so much to teach, but we need to have a conversation. We need to meet people where they're at. We can't just sit there and stand on that pedestal and with my years and knowledge and wisdom, this is where I was and this is where I am now. We need to come and have a conversation sit with each other as Jesus sat with us. Well, that's all the Lord wishes me to share right now. I pray blessings from Abba through his son Yeshua, through his Holy Spirit over everyone who is watching this video. Wait, Lord, may, may we learn to be more merci merciful, compassionate, like you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. I love you, brothers and sisters. Have a good day.